this is part 21 and we have started discussing chapter 17 of the Indian Penal Code which deals with offenses against property right from section 378 up to section 462 of the Indian Penal Code. The first section with which we did is section 378 of the Indian Penal Code which defines the offense of theft. Right from section 379 up to section 382 are the sections which deal with punishment and then we have dealt with section 383 of the Indian Penal Code which defines the offense of extortion. After understanding what do you mean by extortion, right from section 384 up to section 389 are the sections which deal with punishment and we dealt with section 390 of the Indian Penal Code which defines the offense of robbery. Then we dealt with section 391 of the Indian Penal Code which defines the offense of deputy and during course of our lecture we have learned Whenever you want to know what do you mean by dacoity, dacoity is an aggravated form of robbery. So in order to understand dacoity, you must know robbery which is defined by section 390 and robbery is an aggravated form of either theft or extortion. Hence these are the sections to which you have to refer to. During course of our lecture, I had drawn your attention to section 393 where attempt to commit robbery, there is express provision as far as the quantum of the punishment is concerned taking into consideration the seriousness of the offence and then section 399 of the Indian Penal Code where making preparation to commit a party is also made punishable by the provisions of the Indian Penal Code. Up then right from section 392 up to section 402 are the sections which deal with punishment and now we start discussing Section 403 of the Indian Penal Code which defines the offense of dishonest misappropriation of property. Now in order to understand this, let us, I mean as usual, start with few illustrations. The first illustration, Mr. A went to his friend's library in the absence of his friend. And then he went to the library, took out a book which he thought he must read it and then return it to the friend. With this, he took away, he had taken the book in the absence of friend and there, there was no express consent but that is implied consent as far as the fifth explanation to section 378 of the Indian Penal Code is concerned. He got that book, started reading the book, enjoyed the book and then he wanted to have a copy of book with him but unfortunately the copy of the book was not available in the market as a result of which now he decides that he will keep that book with him forever. He is not going to return that book to the friend. What is his liability is the question for our consideration. First illustration. In the second illustration, somebody came to me. He was under impression that he was taking his own book, but he had taken my book. He went home, he noticed it. He wanted to return, but after two days he decided not to return that book to me but make an addition to his library so he got that book because of what is known as mistake of fact. In the third situation I just want I was going by road and I had just dropped this book on the road somebody Mr. A found out this book on the road my name was written everything was written on the book over there but then he said let me return it within day or two and then after two days he decides not to return that book. Who is he? He is finder of the goods. And what he has done? He has, I mean, finder of the goods has not, I mean, resorted, resorted to reasonable means within a reasonable time to find out true owner of the property. And then he has taken away that he has, I mean, uh, converted that book to his own use. What is his liability is the question for our consideration. Now, in the first, uh, the, the possession, which I mean, uh, as far as the offense of the, uh, dishonest misappropriation of property is concerned is when you are finder of the goods that is one thing secondly when you got property because of mistake of fact that is one thing secondly thirdly you have got what is you go to the friend's library what is known as casual or innocent possession at the time when you have property with you or you have got possession of the property your intention is not at all dishonest 
this intention is developed subsequently and uh, if you misappropriate or convert it to your own use as defined by section 3 403 which says whoever dishonestly misappropriates or converts to his own use any movable property shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for term which may extend to two years or with fine or with both. So, offense of criminal dis dishonest misappropriation can be committed only with respect to movable property. And then, in order to understand this section, as I mean you start, which I have already told you, that you have to read the illustrations which are given. Now, what is the, what is the duty of the person? What, what is the duty of the friend? Can you, what is the liability of the friend as he has taken book? He is not liable for the offense of theft as defined by section 378 for the simple reason that his intention was not dishonest at the time of owning the property. One who has taken my book out of my possession because of mistake of fact, he had no dishonest intention and hence the question of liability for the offense of theft as far as section 378 of the Indian Penal Code doesn't arise. But then what is his liability or when you are finder of the goods, what is the liability? And this, in order to understand this liability, when you have got what is known as casual possession, when you have got what is known as innocent possession, when you are finder of the goods, unless you resort to find out who is the true owner of the property and then you must I mean, return it to the true owner, otherwise your liability so what is the duty that has been defined as far as section 403 is concerned? When you are finder of the goods, you may not be knowing who is the owner of the property, but you know that you are not owner of the property and hence legal duty is cast. When you have taken somebody's property because of mistake of fact or you have got it because of mistake of fact. For example, you go to the cashier and the cashier wanted to pay you, I mean, wanted to part with, I mean, uh, 500 rupees. And instead of that, he has paid you 1000 rupees. What is your duty? When you have realized, when you came to know that 500 rupees more is paid to you, it is your duty to go to the cashier back and return it to him if you do not. And mind well now, this is when we are talking, we are talking about the illustrations. We always take into consideration extreme cases by fact, taking into consideration the facts which are undisputed. No argument, this is a question of proof and when the it is a question of proof, the court is guided right from section 1 up to section 167 of the Indian Evidence Act and during course of time. I mean, I don't cite cases over here because you can understand the cases which are decided either by the Supreme Court or the High Court. But once I mean, once you start reading the case, when you want to go through the case law, you must know Indian Penal Code, you must know Criminal Procedure Code, you must know Indian Evidence Act, then only you can understand. Hence what we are trying to do, we are trying to I mean, try to understand Indian Penal Code in terms of illustration, by taking into consideration illustration. But as you will start learning the provisions of the Criminal Procedure Code and Indian Evidence Act, you will come across many cases. For the time being, yes, if you want, I mean, you can go on learning, no doubt about it. Because when the matter goes to the court of law, it is a question of, I mean, evidence, with where there may be a direct evidence, there may be a circumstantial evidence, there may be a documentary evidence, there may be, I mean, uh, oral evidence, there may be a primary evidence, there may be a secondary evidence, the evidence may be admissible, it may be relevant, it may not be relevant. All these things with which you shall be dealing when you learn the provisions of the Indian Evidence Act, right? I am going to make mention of some of the sections as far as Indian Evidence Act is concerned during the course when they are relevant from the point of view of understanding the provisions of the Indian Penal Code with which we shall be dealing. No doubt about it. But for the timing, for the timing, now what is that, what is the li his liability? He is liable. And now, if you, I mean, start, I mean, dealing with this, what is the duty that is cast? One who is a finder of the goods must, I mean, hand over that property, must find out the owner and hand it over to the owner. That is one thing. If you have taken property because of mistake of fact, once you realize, once you come, come to know that it is your mistake and by mistake of fact you have taken property of somebody else of which you are not owner, in that case, naturally, you must return it back to him. Or when you 
went to the friend's library and have casual or innocent possession because of you. In other words, intention is not dishonest when you have possession of the property, but which is developed subsequently. What you do? The person dishonestly misappropriates or converts to his own use. Now, as in case of theft, same is the case as far as a, a dishonest misappropriation is concerned, which says a dishonest misappropriation for a time only is a misappropriation within the meaning of this section. And then you are going, you are on the road, you are having a morning walk, you have found out somebody's purse, you have got address and rest of the things with you, and then when you go home, you are supposed, I mean, you intend to contact that person on a telephone and return it to him. But in the meantime, you are compelled to spend some amount and you are not carrying your money purse with you and you spend out of that money purse. And when you go home, you again, I mean, play, uh, keep that amount in the uh, friend, uh, that person's purse. But it is noticed by him. This is misappropriation for time only. It is not at all necessary because of first explanation to the section which says uh, dishonest misappropriation for a time only is a misappropriation within the meaning of this section. It is not necessary that you should have dishonest misappropriation forever. If it is for a time only, then also it constitutes liability as far as section 403 of the Indian Penal Code is concerned. Second explanation, second explanation to this section deal with, which is with respect to the finder of the goods. But before we start dealing with that, let me, I mean, as we have dealt with what, in case of theft we learn, can a person be convicted for the offense of theft with respect to his own property? And the answer that we had, yes, because the offense of theft is linked up with the possession and not with the ownership. Now here, can a person be convicted for the offense of dishonest misappropriation with respect to his own property? And in order to know, the best way to understand this, the answer is yes, but how, when, why? Read small c, that is a illustration as per section 403 is concerned. And what it says, A and B being joint owners of the horse, A takes the horse out of B's possession, intending to use it. Here, as A has a right to use the horse, he does not dishonestly misappropriate it, but if he sells the horse, and appropriates the whole proceeds of his own use, he is guilty of an offense under this section. So there can be liability for dishonest misappropriation by owner, provided he is what is known as joint owner of the property, otherwise not. Now what was the duty? When you jointly own property with somebody, and if you sell the property, though your, I mean, right may be one half, no doubt about it, but then when it is sold out by you, one who has purchased becomes sole owner of the property because that is an exception to the maxim nemo dot caught non habit with which you shall be dealing as far as the provisions regarding the sale of goods act is concerned. The meaning of the maxim is you cannot transfer better than you possess is the principle that uh, meaning of the maxim that is but this is an exception. And now here if you sell, yes, he becomes the owner, but what is your duty? Now your, your share was half of the share and hence you must give half share to the other owner because you are not sole owner, you are joint owner of the property and that is not done by you as in case of this illustration, you are liable or the A is liable for the offense of dishonest misappropriation as per section 403 of the Indian Penal Code is concerned. With this now, we start, I mean, with the second explanation to section, four, section 403, which says, a person who finds property not in the possession of any other person and takes such property for the purpose of protecting, protecting it or resorting it to the owner does not take or misappropriate it dishonestly and is not guilty of an offense. But he is guilty of the offense above defined if he appropriates it to his own use when he knows or has a means of discovering the owner or before he has used reasonable means to discover and give notice to the owner and has kept the property a reasonable time to enable the owner to claim it. What are reasonable means and what is reasonable time in such a case is a question of fact. 
and the last part says it is not necessary that the finder should know who is the owner of the property or that any particular person is the owner of it it is sufficient if at the time of appropriating it he does not believe it to be his own property or in good faith believes the real owner cannot be found so this is uh, what is required to be done when you are finder of the goods you may not know who is the owner but what is the duty that has been cast you must resort to reasonable means within a reasonable time to find out the true owner of the property and if that is not done by you there starts your liability i mean as per section 403 of the indian penal code is concerned now if you go through go through the last illustrations as far as this section uh, this section is concerned then you will find out it says uh, a finds a valuable ring not knowing to whom it belongs a sells it immediately without attempting to discover the owner a is guilty of an offence under this section so there why he is liable because it is it was his duty we are dealing with substantive law and what is substantive law substantive law is that law which defines right duties and liabilities of an individual what is the duty of the finder of the goods what is the duty when you have got casual or innocent possession what is the duty when you take property because of mistake of fact so as you go on reading the illustrations which are given you i mean this will be very clear that i mean at times when the check at times when you find out a check which is a bare check nobody is written name is written on the check but there is every chance or possibility for you to find out who had drawn this check by going to the bank so there is chance or possibility for you to resort to the means but in case when you have found out uh, a find a rupee on the high road not knowing to whom it belongs a picks up the rupee here he has not committed the offence defined in this section so if you find out a coin of a rupee in that case it may not be possible for you to find out and hence when it is not possible for you to find out who is the owner of the property the question is entirely different the question of liability as per section 403 of the indian penal code doesn't arise but otherwise this is the duty that is cast as per section 403 is concerned now i may draw your attention as a student of law to a very interesting situation which can be taken into consideration for the purpose of understanding law in its real sense and then try to have what is known as holistic approach in order to understand the law <clears throat> you are on the road you have found out a diamond ring on the road and then you pick up the ring and as you are on the road there are many persons on the road you pick up the ring now you are you know that you are not owner you are finder of the goods and what you do naturally you are under impression that it must be it must be belonging to somebody who must be by the side of on the road itself you pick up the road and you shout i have found out this ring i mean who is the owner of the ring let the owner take away the ring so that is the these are the means to which you have resorted as i mean you find out something when uh, when you are when you are in the law school what you do you go to the authorities accordingly and hand over property to the authorities when you get down from railway compartment you go to the station master when you get down from the uh, say the trans public transport you go to the concerned person who is in charge over there these are the means to which you adopt there is a law doesn't say which are the means which are required to be adopted by you it merely says you must resort to reasonable means within a reasonable time it's not that you should immediately rush or run but if it is found out that if you have converted that property to your own use or you have misappropriated that then there starts your liability as per section 403 is concerned and we have already dealt with section we have already read section 403 which says who are dishonestly misappropriates or convert to his own use any movable property so here there starts liability of an individual now what you are expected to do when you say that well who is the let let this ring be taken i want to hand it over to the oh, true owner simultaneously five persons claim that they are owner of the property or they are they this ring belongs to them each one of them says i am owner i am owner i am owner what is your duty very interesting situation i mean nothing 
maybe i mean you can say nothing to do as far as indian film code is concerned for the time being but correlate it's i mean as a student of law never think of i mean only one law mind when you must try to correlate the law so that it becomes for you to have what is known as holistic approach and that is really absolutely essential or necessary from the point of view of what from the point of view of making law as your career so what happened in this case what you should do now who are you finder of the goods what is your liability if you are finder of the goods this is the time for me to draw your attention refer to the general principles of contract right from section 1 up to section 75 and read section 71 now whenever i you draw your attention to some other enactments simultaneously if you go on reading i mean that is that is the way in which uh, uh, you can go on learning the law read section 71 and then you will understand who is this finder of the goods and position of the finder of the goods is like a bailey so he is a bailey and then if you start reading right from section 148 onwards you will understand what is bailment what is bailment what is contract of bailment what are the rights of the bailor what are the rights of the bailee what are the duties of the bailor what are the duties of the bailee all these details you will come to know out of which when you read section 168 and 169 what can be done by a person who is a finder of the goods what are these rights what are his duties all details are worked out at because he becomes a bailee and then read section uh, you can read section 168 and 169 as far as indian contract act is concerned but then now this is a time for me to draw your attention to section 167 and what is that when the property is claimed by a person here the ring is claimed by how many persons five persons what is required to be done now what is the duty it is not that give it to anybody no your duty is to give it to the owner and when the nature of the right is what is known as civil right who is the owner and who is not owner you can't yourself sit in the chair of a judge it is required to be decided by the civil court and under such circumstances as a student of law now when you deal with the provisions of the civil procedure code you come to know who goes to the court of law a party goes to the court of law who wants to establish his right and the burden of proof as per section 101 is concerned lies on that particular party who asserts a particular fact as per indian evidence act is concerned so here is the time now here is the time where if you in such a situation you want to i mean decide who is the owner you don't want to claim anything with respect to the ring so you don't want to claim you don't want to say anything regarding the sale you want to merely tell the court of law request the court of law your honor please decide who is the owner of the property and give it to the owner i am not concerned with that because it is not possible for me to find out who is the owner and hence under such circumstances generally a person goes to the court of law in order to establish his right but this is an exception and in order to understand this exception you when you start dealing with the provisions of the civil procedure code you come across section 88 and section 88 of the civil procedure code because the indian contract act is a substantive law civil procedure code is a procedural law which tells you the mechanism to implement the provisions of the substantive law accordingly so when you read section 88 of the india uh, sorry civil procedure code you come across a suit what is known as suit interpleader suit and what is this interpleader suit when you will deal with the provisions of the civil procedure code, you will understand in detail but you are not interested you merely go to the court and tell the court your honor these are the five persons who are claiming ownership with respect to this particular room you decide who is the owner and give it i am not interested i don't have any claim as far as this property is concerned this is exactly your role what is known as interpleader suit now as a student learning civil procedure code here mind well this is i mean you go to the library immediately find out book, book as far as civil procedure code is concerned and then to know civil procedure code you will come to know you have to start right from section 1 up to section 158 of the civil procedure code but then this is not enough mind well 
आज का आफ्टर 58 सेक्शंस ऑफ़ दी सिविल प्रोसीजर कोड यू कम अक्रॉस फॉर शेड्यूल ऑफ़ दी सिविल प्रोसीजर कोड एंड इन शेड्यूल यू कम अक्रॉस वेरियस ऑर्डर्स एंड वंस यू स्टार्ट रीडिंग द ऑर्डर राइट फ्रॉम ऑर्डर वन अप टू ऑर्डर 51 यू कम अक्रॉस वेरियस रूल्स एंड देन आई टेल यू in order to as far as the execution proceeding is concerned from my point of view order 21 as far as civil procedure code is concerned plays very important role if you decide to practice as far as civil side is concerned because whatever decree you get from the court of law is merely a paper decree and in order to execute that you have to follow the procedure which is laid down as far as order 21 of the civil procedure so when you are reading civil procedure code if I am merely going to the where act, you will come to know that there are sections, there are different orders and each order has got many rules accordingly. And for the purpose of knowing the details as far as section 88 of the civil procedure code is concerned, the time for you to refer to order 35 as far as civil procedure code is concerned. So this is the manner in which the time for you to understand learning of the law. All these details may not be, I mean, once you, I mean, read section 403, taking into consideration the illustrations which are given, that will definitely serve your purpose, no doubt about it. But for the purpose of having mastery over the law, for the purpose of having such understanding, I mean, this is the time, simultaneously start learning. Don't wait till the time somebody teaches you. And hence you yourself start learning. And if this is the this is your approach from the point of view of learning law, you will definitely be master within few days if this is the approach that has been taken or that has been followed by you. So this is as far as section 403 of the uh, Indian Penal Code is concerned, which defines the offence of dishonest misappropriation of property. And this offence can be committed with respect to movable property only. This offence cannot be committed with respect to immovable property. And what do we mean by movable property with which you are dealt when we dealt with section 378 of the Indian Penal Code as it is defined by section 22 as per general explanations are concerned. With this now, the they have a special legislature has enacted section 404. And what is this section? It talks about or it decide, deals with dishonest misappropriation of property possessed by deceased at the time of his death. And what the section says? It says whoever dishonestly misappropriates or converts to his own use property, knowing that such property was in possession of a deceased person at the time of person's decease and has not since been in the possession of any person legally entitled to such possession shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for term which may extend to three years and shall also be liable to fine. and if the offender at the time of such person's decease was employed by him as a clerk or servant the imprisonment may extend to seven years so here in this case the special section we, we have enacted, the legislature has enacted as far as liability is concerned, which is dealt as far as section 404 is concerned. And if you read the illustrations which are given, it said, Z dies in possession of furniture and money. His servant A, before the money comes into the possession of any person entitled to such possession, dishonestly misappropriates it, A has committed the offense defined in this section. So when the property is in nobody's possession, so you come across the situation where the property, dishonest misappropriation of property possessed by deceased person at the time of his death, it has not come into anybody's possession. Who is entitled to that property will be governed by the personal law as far as the inheritance is concerned. There may be what is known as testamentary succession when you make a mill or there may be intestate succession when you don't make a will accordingly, the property is not this. But what happens immediately that property before it comes into the possession of the person who is legally entitled to it, what is the liability? And liability is made very clear as far as section 405 of the Indian Penal Code is concerned. Uh, sorry, section 404 of the Indian Penal Code is concerned. With this now, in the next part of our lecture, we start discussing section 405 of the Indian Penal Code, which defines the offense of criminal breach of trust.